Hi and welcome to another video on Palo Alto Networks, uh, specifically talking about how we handle different app IDs and the constant release of app IDs in order to secure your network further. Um, again, as always, please like and subscribe, it really does help. Uh, we're really starting to build some momentum now, lots of people are interested in the channel. So, um, so that, yeah, let's try and make it more popular and get it out to more people. Okay, so the main thing that, that Paolo is, is sold on or used to be is the application ID. So we've got content ID that means that we're always monitoring the applications that are going through and we can see these applications here. Um, we can see that we've got applications that are being used and we can see the, the traffic that's going through them and it provides for a much easier way of, um, of categorizing what your traffic is, uh, so visibility into traffic and you're controlling traffic based on application as opposed to just saying you can go to here on 443 or or whatever. Um, Palo Alto are constantly, constantly evolving this and they're constantly bringing out new application IDs to give you more and more control over that traffic and more and more granular control over what people can do within applications. So what you will have done at some point once you've, once you've signed up and you've got your, your Palo Alto firewall is you will have received a, uh, an email like this. Okay, and this is Palo Alto Network's content update and it, it will give you what content update they're gonna release stuff in and it will give you um, uh, this breakdown here of, of what the, uh, what the um, application is gonna be. So one thing to remember is that with SSL decryption, uh, if it's required, then that means basically if you're not decrypting the traffic, if you're not doing SSL decryption in your network, then you're not going to see this application ID. So you won't you won't be hit by it because you won't be able to see it. It means you also won't be able to control the traffic um, through it. There are ones that aren't uh, required. So these top three are required for SSL decryption. And SSL decryption is not required to identify this traffic. And then we get all sorts of different things as well. We get like different caveats as to DTLS traffic in this content version uh, will be tunneled and, and so on. And it, it basically means that you can start to look at your policy earlier so that you're always maintaining the best security policy. So what they do initially is, and this is how we're gonna sort of, this is the demonstration we're gonna see today. So what they do is they release it as a threat signature ID and you can create, uh, which has its own specific um, category, and we can create a um, vulnerability protection rule that alerts on those um, threat IDs. So you can see where those IDs, where those app IDs would appear within your rule base, and then you can evaluate them uh, based on that and create reports. Okay, so the first place we're going to do it is on a firewall. So we'll do it on the firewall, and then we'll look at doing it on SCM. Okay, so the first thing on our panorama is we're going to look at what our threat version is. The firewalls will have this in exactly the same place. So our threat version, our application version, sorry, which is covers application threats, is 8974. And that is the number that will be referenced. And the, the amend, the addendum to that is going to be different in varying cases based on them bringing out sort of new stuff and emergency releases and so on. So that's the version that we're looking for. What we're going to do is we are going to go into um, objects and we're going to do this specifically for our uh, VM Chicago at the minute. And we're going to go into vulnerability protection. I'm going to create a new uh, profile or shall we use, yeah, we'll create a new profile. So your rules will generally end up being the same as uh, sort of on top of other rules or so on but this one's going to be specifically for this so if you've already got if here you've already got these rules here so if we were to take that and then clone it into this device group and then we have call it our chicago chicago von profile that's probably more accurate to what you would have in your environment. So you've already got these. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another one. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, app ID change.
and then for the for the configuration of this is going to be fairly simple so our action is going to be alert that's going to give us our log our severity is going to be informational so we don't start flooding everything and then our category is going to be app id change and that's what we need for our our rule okay then we move that to the top just so that it gets hit first and then we can actually look for matching signatures as well and if we look for matching signatures just expand this so we can see as well that within the, the threat name so this is from zoom to zoom recalled so something that was originally seen as zoom now we've seen a zoom recalled um, and, and 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 it goes on so from ms teams to ms teams join ms teams to ms teams j delete so it gives you the idea then of what you'd be looking for um, within your rule base to say okay well this was originally seen as ms teams but now it's going to be seen as uh, you could potentially see it as ms teams create well if you've only got ms teams in that rule then that traffic is no longer going to match that rule and so on and that's where we get the new app ids um, filter from which is a great idea so you get new app ids filter so when these are actually re released and they're put into the application database you can allow it but that can also lead you um, sort of down the garden path of, of adding more access than you might have intended. Okay, but we can say okay. And that's our vulnerability profile. And now we need to add that to some rules. So if we add that to our, let's go to Chicago. Uh, Pre-rules, go to pre-rules. And then if we've got our internet safe rule, for instance, we can then go on to here, uh, which is the actions. And then we change that. We could change that to profiles and antivirus. We'll just use mode 44. And then for our vulnerability, we're using our Chicago vulnerability profile, which now contains our rule. That's going to be in our rule. And then that's, that's all good. So when now traffic goes across there, and it sees that application within that, that traffic, it will then give us a log within threats. So you'll look within the threat log and you'll see the new, uh, the app ID change um, category, sorry, app ID change category. And then you'll know that that traffic is, is hitting that rule. You can also create as well a custom report to look back so you can run your custom reports you can schedule them to run and then that's an easier way um, of being able to see what uh, what traffic is, is hitting those uh, app id changes okay so to create our report we're going to do it on on panorama but you could also do exactly the same on the firewall as well we're going to manage our custom reports and we're going to put them in shared okay and we're going to call it app id change and we're going to look at the the threat logs so we're going to go for we can go from the panorama data which is traffic you won't have this on the firewall of course you'll just have summary databases or you'll have um, deeper databases uh, detailed databases what we're going to do is we're going to go for a summary of threat Okay, I'm just going to uh, just going to open this up so we can see it because it renders a bit weird. We're going to do it as scheduled, so we do it for the last seven days. Last seven days, so we are going to. If you don't sort it, there'll be you'll have an issue with you. So I'd sort it by apps, and then group by rules, which you can find in here somewhere. Group by rule, and we'll go with. Uh, 25 groups for instance okay so what we're going to add into our selected columns is we're going to add the rule there and we just add that across like that and then we're going to do the rule UUID as well just to give us our proper um, a proper sort of good view of it we're going to go for the application and then we're going to go for the threat ID name which we'll find down here threat id threat id name and that will give us now that will give us 
everything that we need to know, what rule is going across, what the application is, and then we've got the threat ID name. So we've got the application, which is effectively going to give us like the, the top end application, and then the threat ID name that it's seen going across that application. And then because we want to pick up on just those threats, we're going to go to the filter builder, and we are going to say, I can never find this one, so threat category equal to, and we're going to put in app ID change. Click add to add it to the filter. Don't just click apply because it won't work. And now we've got our app ID change. Now, because there's no logs coming back to this panorama, we won't see any if I run that now. But if you were to run that now, you would see then your applications across there. And then what we need to do is then just push that out to the firewalls and uh, and they will they'll then pick that up and then start enforcing on the firewalls and you'll start to see that that data building up so the next thing to do is to have a look at the uh, how we do that in SCM so we'll move over to our SCM now okay so now on our SCM instance um, looking at all firewalls again we've got the configuration scopes you've got global um, and then all firewalls which will contain everything underneath it a bit like device groups and then we have our firewall there we can also see as well that we've got our, our content distribution here, so we can see our app and threat versions, antivirus the versions, uh, two hours ago was last updated, the last chat is a day ago, wildfire, so on. So it's all there, you can see there, and then we've got our licenses at the bottom. But what we're specifically going to be looking at is the vulnerability profiles, as we said before, and how they differ slightly from, uh, from the normal. So... The first thing we're going to create is our vulnerability uh, rules. So when we come into all firewalls, we've got the two vulnerability protection profiles. And because we want to try and pick up the, uh, the original rules, what we're going to do is we're going to clone that because you can't edit it from here. You can't edit it, period, really. We're going to clone it into here. That will change from a padlock that, like that one was, which is well, a minute ago, to this cloned version here. So now we can... Now we can edit this, and we've got our profile rules at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a rule, and then when you when you add a rule, you get to see the uh, you get to see the signatures underneath. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a a rule for our app ID change. Okay, the action is going to be allow, and we are going to go for informational severity app ID change and then we've got our app ID showing below that actually show us ones which I really quite like I, I like it a lot in SEM as opposed to in panorama and the firewalls because you have to then go looking for them so let's see if we can see if we can expand this out a little bit so we can see here that we've got exactly the same terminology so new from unknown UDP to Delta HMI discovery uh, modified from unknown TCP to IPERF and so on so what we're going to do is we're going to say yep Okay with that, and then it will pop in at the bottom, which we don't want. Um, did I say I didn't? So caught myself out there. This isn't going to be allow. It's going to be alert because if it's not alert, then there's no point. And then we're going to match on the app ID. Okay, all the all the threat all the threat signatures are severity informational. That's threat comes out as. And then we're going to move this up. Now we can't actually move it straight to the top. There is no handle to grab it with. So we just have to keep going up. Um, not necessarily one of the things I like about, about SCM. Okay, so now it's at the top. We're not going to put any overrides in or anything like that. We're just going to simply say yes. We're going to save that. Okay, now that's saved, what we need now need to do is we now need to go to the profile groups because we, we add stuff as a profile group. And in our profile group, we're going to see our best practice, which we're going to, again, we're going to clone so that we retain that original best practice configuration. And we're going to go into it, and then we're going to select our vulnerability, which is best, best practice. If, just as a side note, if we go back and rename that, so if we come back into here and we go best practice 
row 44. Okay. Probably should have done this to begin with, quite frankly. And then we go to the profile groups. Let me rename that. 44 profile uh, group. Okay, so that's now renamed, and because it was it, because it already existed in here, when we rename it one place, of course, it renames it all the way through. And then we can add that now to our firewall rules. So for, if we wanted to create, say, a security rule, internet access, create any, to select, and then internet, any, any. Application, application defaults. Well, actually, we'll go for, we'll, we'll do it properly. Eh? We'll go for SSL. Okay. And then web browsing. And then DNS. That way we've got everything covered. And you can effectively get to the internet with that. And then our best practice is going to be changed by our best practice mode 44 group. And we're going to allow... Internet access is already in use. Yes, it is. Internet access. Custom. There we go. And then when we push that down to our firewall now, we're going to see now that that is on there. It's on the firewall, and we will get exactly the same. And then we've, and then we've got, so we now have our rule, and we have our, our best practice, and we'll see that. And then if you look into the logs again, you'll be able to see it on the logs. So we, now we're going to do just simply push the config to the firewalls which is going to be our new app ID rule. So, detection. Okay, so then we'll do its normal validation. We'll push it out to the firewalls and we have a look at the firewall in a minute and then we'll see our, our best practice on there. Um, and then we can then check in the logs there. Now, if I had... Um, SS, SLS or CDL backed off to this and I'd be able to check on the logs here as well and go through the threat logs but I haven't so so I can't and as I say if you've got the new app ID rules um, they're a good idea it all becomes a balancing act between security and operationalization really it's if you've got a very, very secure environment that needs to be extreme secure and so extremely controlled then I would, I would argue that the new app ID filter rule probably isn't the best because it's there designed specifically to allow people to uh, to use new apps when they become available in order to keep access um, open whereas you know in a secure environment you probably wouldn't want to allow that now if it's the other way around and you're you're more interested in your user experience and um, uptime and, and everything that is more important seen as more important than security then yeah that'd be a good idea to put in there Okay, so that is now pushed and we can see that we've got our policy and our firewall of the Internet Access Custom. If we just scooch along a little bit to the other side, we can see that it's using our best practice mode 44 group profile, uh, profile group. Now vulnerability protection. See best practice mode 44 and we can see our app ID at the top. And if you say find matching signatures, we can see the signatures in here, so it's aware of that. And it will flag that, and then we create the uh, we create the custom reports exactly the same way. So that's really, in a nutshell, how to sort of deal with the the release of new app IDs um, and the updates from Palo Alto, the content updates, and how you can start to then monitor your firewalls, monitor your application usage, and see how you can either um, offset people suddenly not being able to work because the application ID has changed or you can uh, integrate the app IDs as they change into your policies and create the more granular policies from the start continuing the security cycle all the way through hope that's helped um, I say please like and subscribe if you've made it this far very few people do um, and I will uh, I'll see you in the next one